Video 27 of the master course Quantum Chemistry of Molecular Electromagnetic Properties. The topic of this lecture is potential energy in an electric field. In the last lecture, we discussed the electrostatic potential outside of a molecule due to the charges in the molecule. And one of the reasons we're doing that is because this electrostatic potential is of course very important for the interaction between molecules because another molecule in the neighborhood of this first molecule will feel this electrostatic potential which gives then rise to the interactions. And we saw that we can expand that electrostatic potential in a power series, in a Taylor series and in the individual terms of this Taylor expansion of the electrostatic potential of a molecule, we will have the different moments of the charge distribution of this molecule, like the total charge of the molecule, the electric dipole moment, the quadrupole moment, and so forth. This implies then that these moments, dipole moment, quadrupole moment, octopole moment, and so forth, play an important role in the description of molecular interactions. So the focus in the last lecture was in a, some way from the molecule outside. We were looking at how the charges in the molecule will influence the surrounding. In this lecture now, we will turn the view around and we will look how external fields influence our molecule. And we will see that these electric moments, which we had introduced in the last lecture, will also play an important role for the description of the interaction of a molecule with external fields. So let's therefore look at the potential energy, E, of a charge distribution, meaning the positive and negative charges in our molecule, of a charge distribution which is immersed, so our molecule is immersed in an external static electric field. And like we <coughs> had introduced it in uh, chapter two of the book, we will describe the electric field by its potential, which uh, in this case is the, if it's a static electric field, it's just the scalar potential. And the definition of the, or the expression for the energy of a charge distribution in the presence of uh, scalar potential is this one here. <coughs> where we have to integrate over whole space because we have not individual charges where we just would add up, but we have um, a continuous charge distribution here with the charge density rho. This is nothing else than um, an expression we already had, generalization to a continuous charge distribution before we just had the, the energy of a charge in a potential would be just the product of the charge times the potential, but as we have here now a continuous charge distribution, or we're looking at the continuous charge distribution, we have to make this product at every point in space. So we have to integrate over it. Now again, like in the last uh, lecture, we have the situation that we have an integral here, and we need to know these uh, charge distribution or the density, charge density, and every point in space in order to be able to calculate that. And again, like in the last time, we don't really want to do that. So we will again try to uh, use a Taylor expansion here. And in here, we will now make a Taylor expansion of our scalar potential. And that's just the usual uh, Taylor expansion, except it's again uh, a three-dimensional one. So we will expand our potential here, our scalar potential, which is the potential coming from the external electric field around an expansion point, uh, our O again, an origin. So we'll have the value of the potential at this point. And then in the next term, the first time in our uh, Taylor expansion is the derivative of our potential multiplied with, again, the step how far away from the expansion point we want to know uh, the value of the potential. And the next term is then again the second derivative. And again, 
uh, multiplied with this step squared, but uh, as we are uh, working with three-dimensional space uh, and our steps are sort of vectors, we have here have to sum over all vector components. Let's look first now at these derivatives because we actually know what those derivatives is. The derivative of the potential, the gradient of the potential here, actually minus the gradient of the potential, that is just the electric field. And similar, the second derivative of the potential, and there are of course nine, nine second derivatives, and again with a minus sign, that is what is called the electric field gradient. <coughs> this first one, that's just the relation which we already had in chapter two, the relation between a field and the uh, electrostatic potential, which is where we had that the field is minus the gradient of the electrostatic potential. And this is just the second derivative, so it's the gradient of the gradient of the potential, but the first gradient, that's the field, so it's the electric field gradient tensor here. Now we can insert these definitions now, or we can insert these relations together with our expansion, now in the expression for the potential energy, which then looks like this. And you will hopefully immediately note that now again, we have integrals over our uh, charge density, integrals of the charge density and the charge density multiplied with our uh, step here, uh, with our step length of increasing powers. So again, we have our moments here, the total charge, here the first electric moment or what we also call the electric dipole moment, here the second electric moment and so forth. Which means we can write our expansion of the potential energy of a molecule in an external electrostatic potential with these uh, moments. And we get this expression here, where the first term is the charge multiplied with the value of the electrostatic potential at our expansion point. The second term now is just the product, the vector product of our dipole moment vector, the dipole moment of the molecule, times the electric field at our expansion point. And the next term is now the second electric moment times the electric field gradient at uh, the expansion point and so forth. We can also alternatively write the same expansion in terms not in with the second electric moment, but again with this quadrupole moment tensor with this traceless quadrupole moment tensor, which we had introduced in the lecture before. <coughs> and then the one half becomes one third of that. If you look at the relation, you can see that. Where we here have now the quadrupole moment tensor times the electric field gradient. Um, it's important to note or to, to remember, as we discussed in the last time, that uh, some of those moments, well, the majority of those moments actually depend on the choice the value of those moments depend on the choice of our origin here. Remember it was that the first not vanishing moment is independent of the origin and all the higher ones will then depend on the origin. Therefore, it's, I've written it explicitly here in all the cases that these moments depend. And we of course also need the value then of the field or field gradient and so forth at the same point. So you can see that these electric moments, dipole moment, quadrupole moment, and so forth, they can be used in two ways. They can be used to, in an expansion of the electrostatic potential of coming from our um, charge distribution, but they also can be used in the an expansion of the interaction energy of our charge distribution with an external electrostatic uh, potential coming from an external field. Let's look at this expression in once again. I've written it up here. Um, we can also use this expression now in a way in the opposite way now, because we have here the energy of our molecule in the presence of this external field, uh, which is not homogeneous, so it might have a field gradient and so forth. So in the presence of this external electrostatic potential, and uh, the energy 
depends on the dipole moments and the quadrupole moments. So I can actually use this expression here to get definitions or expressions for the dipole moments and for the second electric moments or the quadrupole moments, because you can see that um, if I take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to a component of the electric field here, so if I do that, the left and the right hand side, then I actually get my dipole moment here. So I can define also the dipole moment or component of the dipole moment, it's a vector, as the derivative of the interaction energy, the energy of my charge distribution in the presence of the electrostatic potential with respect to the corresponding component of the field. And similar, I can define the second electric moments as a derivative of the energy with respect to a component of the electric field tensor and of course then also this uh, traceless electric quadrupole moment in the same way. So we end up now having two different ways of calculating uh, electric dipole moments. We have the original of course definition of the moment which is the integral over the charge distribution and then powers of this um, position vector distance from the expansion point. But we can also calculate them. And of course, we can use these expressions here. If we know the charge distribution and can do the integral, then we can calculate the dipole moment at the higher moments in this way. But we alternatively also could calculate them by if we know what the energy of our charge distribution in the presence of an external uh, field or external potential is. If we know the energies, then we can get the dipole moments, the quadrupole moments, and so forth as derivatives of the energy with respect to a, the corresponding component of the electric field or the electric field gradient. And in the following section, we will actually use both expressions in order to get to a quantum mechanical expression for dipole moments, quadrupole moments, and so forth.